What's up? What's up? What's up, LA? 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 What's up? Greetings, friends, and welcome back to your monthly dose of What's Up LA. I'm Brian. And I'm Regina. And this month, we're bringing you all the who's and what's that have the LA arts community buzzing. But before we get to the amazing updates, we have some exciting news about the artists formerly known as CRE Outreach. You heard that right, folks. There's been a rebranding. Last month, we teased that CRE was changing their name. So please allow us to reintroduce ourselves. Brian, tell us all about it. That is correct, Regina. On October 24th, after 13 years, we officially changed our name from CRE Outreach to Arts Up LA. Arts Up LA? Kind of like, what's up LA? Am I right? Nailed it. It's all making sense. CRE has been a staple in the LA arts community for so many years. So what brought on the change? I'm glad you asked. Not too long ago, we realized that we had grown as an organization into something bigger and needed a name that reflected who we had become. The UP in Arts Up LA stands for Unlimited Possibility. And that's what we believe in at our core, that we are a home for any aspiring artistic spirit, regardless of where they come from. Amazing. And in honor of the rebranding last month, our talented musical group, Rex and Friends, put on an incredible performance during the virtual announcement. For those of you who missed the live performance, and for those of you who saw it and already know how powerful it was, below is a link to the live show. Wow, that was the perfect launch. I cannot wait to see what All Arts Up LA has to offer. But wait, does that mean the wink is out? Unfortunately, Regina, much to everyone's disappointment, I'm sure. I think it's finally time to retire the wink. For better or worse, it won't soon be forgotten. So, we officially welcome you to What's Up LA with the artist now known as Arts Up LA. Let's keep this train rolling with our next segment, Regina. The year 2020 has in no way been an easy ride. And while we're all probably anxiously counting down the days until we're in the clear, of this dumpster fire of a year. We're now entering the beloved holiday season when gratitude and love are more prominent than ever. This year's list of thanks to give might look a little different than previous years, but no less important or meaningful. Let's be honest, 2020 made us all slow down a little. <clears throat> a lot. <laughs> You're right, Bri, we slowed down a lot. But with the slower pace also comes a renewed appreciation for things like our health, unexpected family time, technology that allowed us to stay connected with friends and family in a time plagued with isolation. A literal take on business casual work attire with business on the top, PJs on the bottom. And so much more. Or less. <laughs> but one thing I think we can all agree on is that what's really gotten us through this year, besides Netflix, and Zoom happy hours. Are the people in our lives who have been there for us throughout it all. Sometimes, in a world of gloom and doom, all it takes to brighten someone's day is to remind them how much they mean to you and what they've done to make an impact on your life. This past month, we sent some friends out on an important mission to surprise someone special in their life with a little splash of gratitude and what we're calling gratitude bombing. Roll the tape, Bri. You guys are so cute. You guys are my favorite people in the whole world. And I <laughs> you guys are my favorite people in the world, too. Thank you, yeah. Ryan. You're such amazing parents and for oh. being so sweet. I'm so lucky you guys are my parents. We're lucky we have you as our yes. daughter, too. As yes. is the you guys are like the most chill, nicest, best parents. Oh, you're you are a we'd like chill, to have, we have chill like, daughter too. We like to have a good relationship with our kids. This is we, we definitely do. Judy! I was having a moment over here and I thought, you know what, it would be a really great idea if I called Judy to let her know that I am so grateful for you. 
seriously, honestly, and truly for everything that you have ever done. Always having my back. I love you for that. Thank you. I love you um, too. And I mean, just honestly, you are one of the one of the bright lights in my life, and I don't feel alone because I have a friend like you. And genuinely, I probably never told you this before, but I do love you. I love you, and I'm not even joking. You know, I'm not all mushy, but I love you. I do. And I think Lisa, you're just I love you too. Thank you so much. Hey, Dad, I just want to let you know that you mean so much to me. Uh, you supported me ever since I was a little boy, and you're my hero in my life. And I have so much compassion, and I've learned so much from you, and I love you so much. I'm just sharing this with you out of love. Oh, that was beautiful, Greg. I love you, and yeah, you are my gratitude. Wow. Thank you so much, and I, I hope you have a wonderful day. Well, it will be now. <laughs> Reactions are my favorite part. We encourage all of you to take part in the Gratitude Bombing Challenge by simply letting someone in your life know how grateful you are for them. And speaking of gratitude, that is a perfect segue into our next segment. When you think of the word gratitude, there's a fearless group of Americans that we all owe a tremendous amount of thanks and gratitude. In a league all their own, our brave veterans courageously put their lives on the line so that the rest of us can live without worry here at home. So, in honor of Veterans Day on November 11th, we're celebrating the servicemen and women who heroically put country before self. Hi, I'm Judy Welch, the program manager of Veterans Empowerment Theater at Arts of LA. Now, now we all know this has been a tough year on everyone and the veterans community has been hit especially hard, but there is hope out there. In Veterans Empowerment Theater, we have created online workshops for monologue classes and our very own theater rehearsals. But there are also some amazing organizations that work with veterans in the arts and film industry. And I was fortunate enough to catch up with a couple of them to find out how they have adapted during this crazy pandemic. We have our very own Brian Hansen with VME, Veterans in Media and Entertainment, and Jennifer Campbell from Post 43 in Hollywood. How are you doing today, Brian? I'm doing great, Judy. Thanks for having me. Can you tell me what is your position with VME? And can you tell us what VME stands for? Yes, VME stands for Veterans in Media and Entertainment. I am the Director of Events and Education. So uh, VME is a nonprofit organization uh, that helps veterans transition and find mentorship or find a, ability to mentor newcomers who want to transition into the in entertainment industry. So how did VME get started? I believe it was around 2010, 2012-ish, the small group of veterans that started meeting um, at the American Legion Post 43 here in Hollywood, kind of a basement type um, alumni group of, of veterans who were going through the struggle of breaking into Hollywood. And now it's nationwide, 3,000 plus members. Now, how has VME been impacted, rather small or large, by the coronavirus pandemic? VME has been impacted significantly. In particular, we do a lot of live in-person events. So what we've done, like the rest of the world, is we've gone to a Zoom format. The Zoom format has opened up to like chapters around the country. So it's not just only if you're in LA, but now we have people all over the country that can just really participate in a way we, we weren't able to include, you know, those people as much as we wanted to, those members. Now we can. We're a hub to offer opportunities, even internship opportunities, job opportunities. There's a lot of people that want to help veterans. Um, studios, agencies have initiatives to help veterans. Um, and they come to us to push that information out to our membership. So we really are an informational hub and a, a network hub as well. Well, Brian, I wanna thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day 
Thank you, Judy. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Me. Thank you so much for doing this interview. And this is- Yeah, my pleasure. Can you tell me what is your position over at Post 43? Sure. So I am the commander of Hollywood Post 43. Um, we're a volunteer service organization. Now, also, what has Post 43 been doing to help the veteran community during this coronavirus pandemic? Sure. So we've been doing several blood drives. Obviously, blood supplies are critically low across the across the nation in general. So we've been consistently doing blood drives, um, which have been very popular, um, you know, kind of shifting things. So we make it, you know, COVID compliant, you know, having, you know, chairs and beds that are properly spaced away. People are there doing, you know, um, uh, health scans and, and checks and things like that in advance. Everything is by appointment. So we make sure that we're, you know, not only protecting, you know, um, protecting our, our building and our, our members, but the, the community and, and those we serve and the, the healthcare workers. Absolutely. Now, I want to talk about this wonderful thing that's going on over there. And that is the drive-in theater. The drive-in, yes. Oh um, my gosh, that is so wonderful. It's been very exciting. It's been, it was a challenging process transitioning our business model um, to the outdoors and allowing, you know, our members to, to congregate and, and kind of, you know, experience something, at least, you know, within our cars and whatnot, um, <laughs> something that we can bring to the public. Uh, for them to experience movies again, and uh, and then you know our, our private events for you know the the Hollywood industry that's obviously been affected so so drastically. So we have ticketed okay. screenings for the public. We've got member nights where we do screenings for the members. Uh, we'll be doing Ooh. something really exciting for them on Veterans Day, which we're really proud yeah. to do. And what days are you showing these movies right now? Right now, it's seven days a week for the ticketed screenings. Uh, HollywoodLegionTheater.com. That is wonderful. And yeah, it, we're happy that we can bring a little piece of that back to the community. Obviously, you know, yeah. the, the arts have been, you know, kind of disproportionately hit by a lot of this stuff. So, yes. you know, being able to bring back to that to the, the community. And this is the really the first drive in in the heart of Hollywood. You know, you don't have to drive out to the valley or, you know, go super far away to to enjoy this kind of thing. So it was important that, you know, uh, that we are in Hollywood, that we can provide a piece of what makes Hollywood so special. That is wonderful. Jen, I really want to thank you so much for sitting in here with us and talking about the wonderful things that American Legion Post 43 is doing. Wow, those are such inspiring organizations to help our vets and give them wonderful creative outlets. Agreed, Regina. The arts really have a way of bringing people together and providing our veterans with services and communities to connect and create with one another. Well said, Brian. We'd like to personally thank all of our veterans for everything you've done and continue to do for our country. The United States is stronger because of each of you. So thank you for your service. Retweet. And now it's time for one of my favorite segments of our show, Heads Up. This month, we're highlighting a fantastic platform called Scoops of Inclusion. Regina? Tell us a little more about this initiative. Scoops of Inclusion is a short film and online learning platform that celebrates diversity and differences among us and empowers kids to take part in creating a more inclusive world. Through lesson plans, worksheets, and contests, Scoops of Inclusion can be easily integrated into any school curriculum to help our youth create a better world, a better future, where differences don't separate us, but instead, bring us together. Now that's a world I want to live in. Let's take a look at the trailer for the Scoops of Inclusion short film. Scoops of Inclusion by Infinite Flow is a short film led by multiracial dancers with and without disabilities, empowering kids to celebrate differences, contribute their strength, and be part of creating a world where we each feel we belong. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is more important than ever. We're not separate from society. We're very much part of the world, very much part of life.
Five in Lankley, five in Lankley, similar, same team. For me, I don't know about everyone else. Anyone can dance with whoever they want because, well, why not, right? In the meantime, due to COVID-19, most schools are still running classes online and teachers are under high pressure to keep students engaged. So we decided to turn Infinite Flow's in-person school assembly program into a short film that can be streamed from anywhere. Scoops of Inclusion comes with lesson plans, worksheets, and contests and can be easily integrated into the school curriculum and it can also be enjoyed as a family learning activity. Scoops of Inclusion includes open captioning, ASL interpretation, and audio description. Scoops of Inclusion was produced following COVID-19 filming guidelines and best practices. Scoops of Inclusion will be available to stream at no cost at scoopsofinclusion.org starting October 2020. It's never too late and it's never too early to become an inclusive leader. Now you guys ready to get this ice cream party started? Be sure to check out Scoops of Inclusion by Infinite Flow. Be sure to watch Scoops of Inclusion. Be sure to check out Scoops of Inclusion. I love learning about all these other inclusive organizations throughout LA. And not to brag, but that's two months in a row now that we've featured categorically better dancers than myself. I think I'm starting to become self-conscious of my inferior skills. Do we need to sign you up for some virtual classes, Bri? Way ahead of you. But boy, it'll be nice to finally dance with another person when COVID's over. Oh boy. Moving on, I also had the esteemed pleasure of sitting down with the creator of Scoops of Inclusion, Marissa Hamamoto, to discuss the program. <laughs> Thank you, Marissa, for being here. I'm so excited. Um, you are a powerhouse, and I'm so grateful to know you. Uh, what was the motivation behind creating Scoops of Inclusion? So I am the founder of Infinite Flow, which is a professional dance company composed of dancers with and without disabilities. Our mission is to use dance to promote inclusion and innovation. Uh, because of the pandemic, we had to cancel all of the assemblies. And then um, during the summer, a couple schools approached us for virtual school assemblies. After everything that happened over the summer with all the protesting and kind of seeing the response from everyone and everything, you know, I was like, man, diversity, equity, inclusion is more important than ever. That lit a fire for me to go, all right, we're taking our school assembly program to an online program. And that ultimately became a short film named Scoops of Inclusion. I know you filmed during quarantine. What would you say, since it was a big production, what would you say was the biggest challenge that you guys had to overcome? We had to make sure that not only did we follow COVID-19 guidelines, we just wanted to make sure that everybody was safe and everybody felt safe. I always try to think of this as human-centric design in, in the sense that we take the human being into consideration first. What message would you like to get across to your audience with this film? First of all, you know, let's put inclusion first, not last. Um, Let's put accessibility first, not last. People just don't get that accessibility is a human right. It's if you want to build something on the outside, you got to build it in yourself first. When you start to really embrace your authentic self, then you're going to start to become more accepting and accepting, not just accepting, but embracing other, other people's identities. There is power in seeing so many diverse bodies dance. Do you have any advice for someone who is starting or eager to pave their own way or to start their own business, to start their own dance company? What would you say to them? You know, what, what do you, what do you care about? I think dig deep into what you care about. You know, you, you do have to have a really strong why to, to doing it. Like it takes a lot of endurance and courage and um, and being okay with making mistakes along the way, because you will, 
Where can people find you? So scoops, you can, you can access scoops of inclusion um, at scoopsofinclusion.org. Um, you can find me um, either at infiniteflowdance.org or marissahamamoto.com. You're the best. Thank you so much. Thank you, Regina. And a huge thank you to Marissa and Scoops of Inclusion for being a pioneer in making this world a better, more inclusive place. And just like that, our time together has once again come and gone. As always, thanks for joining us for another episode of Talking About What's Up, in LA. And now it's time for our featured musical performance. Here to inspire you to take part in your civic right and honor to vote for whoever you'd like is our chief creative officer, Colin Simpson, with a musical number. Because nothing says politics quite like a musical number. Don't go anywhere because you're going to want to be the first to see it. We'll see you next month. I'm Regina Saldivar. And I'm Brian Caldwell. And, and that's, that's what's, what's up. up. Pichu